Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I talk about JavaScript front-end and computers and bad jokes. That list is going to grow every time. Today I'm going to be continuing on with this little series of videos where I'm talking about Dino, the Node.js killer. Hmm. Uh, Dino, if you're not familiar with what it is, I encourage you to look at my previous video where I kind of give you the 411 about what Dino is all about. So rather than repeating myself, uh, just go watch that video and I'll wait here. Now that we're all cut up to speed, today I figured I'd play with Dino's uh, web server functionality. So today we're going to be making some uh, web server. Yeah, I repeated myself there. To start things off, I'm going to be using one of the vanilla examples of a web server from Dino's homepage. Uh, might as well start with the easiest option of them all before we start delving into some more custom things. So I'm going to copy and paste a web server here. Copy and paste that into my terminal here. And we are going to do this be 33. To give a refresher, Dino doesn't have a package JSON. All its dependencies are resolved via URLs. And the way that you do versioning with Dino is via just a different URL, essentially. So if I want to actually use the standard library of the HTTP server, I could just use this URL to get this serve uh, function here. But to actually kind of make the version of the package that matches the version of Dino that I'm using, which is 0 0.33, if you're watching this in the future and Dino is at like version four, probably all the code you're seeing right now is gonna be wrong, but so is the cost of technology moving faster. So I'm using 0 0.33, and what's kind of cool is I can actually write, I can click on this and actually go to the source code which is really cool. It's kind of like an emphasis that Dino's trying to force here. And I can actually read all the source code that's that's going to be used in this package. Uh, when I'm importing from here, serve, I actually search in here, could do uh, export function serve. This is the function that I'm gonna be using for making my web server. So having that very clear uh, from my code to like the code that I'm depending upon, having that be a very clear relationship, I think is a very wonderful strength of Dino. So let's save this and let's run this uh, index.ts and it's compiling it and I get an error. Again, just to remind you from last time, Dino is secure by default, which means that operations that may either access the uh, read the file system, write the file system, or access the network, you have to explicitly tell Dino that you, it has permission to, to do so. The strength of this is let's say there's some script online that you want to use and it says run Dino and the script path like the URL. Uh, it might be maliciously deleting your entire hard drive. And if you don't actually say allow write, then you will not have that worry because Dino will not have the ability to do so. So that's what makes things nice and secure. So and also it shows you where it's trying to actually access the server. So let's actually run this again with allow net. So right here, allow net. And now I can actually open this up. And here we go. I got a server. My first Dino server, what a joy. Uh, and actually what's cool is that any path works, which makes sense because if you look at the source code, uh, it's using this function to create a server on port 8000. It's, it's logging that it's running on that server. And then here's some interesting code that you might not have seen before. This is a async iterator. And what that means is that, so this is the instance of the server, and this iterator, this for loop, this for of loop, is waiting for every request to come in. That's every request to the server. Such that when a request comes in, I can then respond with hello world. And this is the, uh, now what's lovely about this is, this is just vanilla JavaScript actually, like this, is using TypeScript for typing, but this actually is just JavaScript as well. If I did a .js, it should work as fine as well. But what's cool because it is TypeScript, I can actually go here and actually inspect all the properties on it so that I can actually understand what this request object has without actually a server request, uh, which without actually having to read the documentation, which is really cool. So body, connection, uh, some of these things don't really make much sense to me. 
not done. Maybe the source code has more documentation on it. But here's one that I find interesting, store request.url. So if I want, I can log this request.url. And even more so, if I wanted to, I can uh, change this to a template and console it log to the page. So when I go here, oh, I gotta restart the server. Compiling, running. Here we go. Hello world, woo woo. And what's interesting about the console is that it's actually showing that the browser is requesting woo woo, but it's also requesting fav icon, which is kind of fun. Um, so that's cool, that's a server. Uh, what I wanna do today actually is to kind of do our own implementation of the micro, micro framework. Uh, in case you're not aware of it, it's a very bare bones little HTTP microservice that essentially just takes in one file and then on its default export runs that file as the request handler for the page. And by default, it just handles the root path. There's no path underneath it. So to make this work just grossly to start things off, we're gonna actually make a new file here. New file, uh, right around there, oops. I'm gonna call this uh, micro, uh, we'll call it handler. And this handler, because I like to think, when I write these codes, I like to think about how a user would use like my library essentially, and then I can kind of work my way backwards from that to like make the library behave as I'd expect it to. Um, so here I'm gonna do export default. I'm just gonna export default a function that's just going to return the text that I wanna show. So I'm gonna say this is so small. So that's cool. So if I wanted to actually make this work correctly, I'm going to go up here. I'm gonna say import handler from handler.ts. And then what I wanna do is essentially get this request body, right? So let's comment that out, make this a little bit bigger so I can actually see it. So I'm gonna do request.respond and this is gonna be uh, the body and it's just gonna call the handler. Right? That's all I really need to do. Like it's really bare bones. Uh, so small. So that works fine. Um, probably what I want to do as well is give the server request to the handler if I wanted to. So let's do this. Pass it in there. Of course, we're getting a typing error because it's not expecting that. So I'm going to call this uh, request, which is getting the server request from Dino. Look at that automatic import. So nice. And what's nice about this is then I can actually inspect this and do the same thing that I was doing before, where I can actually uh, grab this text, do this, and now I can actually do request.url and do a break line from here. Let's compile that. And again, that's working as expected. Uh, now, I don't actually want to support different paths at all because my micro framework should just know that it's only on the root and that's it. So to do that, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna say uh, if, if request.url is equal to this, then we'll let the handler call it. Otherwise, don't do anything. I don't know what, what's gonna happen there. So here, that works correctly, but here it should be boo. Oh, this is funny. So because I have no handler responding to it, it's just gonna wait until the server replies. And the server has no code in here that says how it should reply. So the browser is just gonna keep requesting this forever until I kill the server or stop the request. So I'm wondering if I can actually go into here and say request dot uh, done. Does that work? This is a deferred error undefined to property. It's not a function. Uh, request dot respond and then this takes in a response so what does the response look like response has body headers status trailers these are all things so I can just maybe just have it be respond with an empty object so let's see what happens there I don't actually know eh, nothing just responds empty so rather than it ooh. Oh, haha, so it's saying, so it's responding, but that's not what I actually want it to do. I want it to respond only when it's not the root URL. 
No. I want to do else. Respond with nothing. Start that server. Do this. So small. Lol. There we go. This. So small. So that's working correctly. And now let's think about how we could wrap this to make it into a nice CLI. So the API that we want to do <clears throat> is essentially be able to call index.ts and then passing in an argument to the handler. So like this, such that when I install this script globally, like as uh, microdino, I can just call microdino handler.ts and it'll point to wherever I want it to go and use that file as the handler for the root of this file. So if I run this right now, what's kind of cool, let's actually make this bigger, is that Dino has uh, a built-in args property on the Dino object. So if I were to actually console log this out, when I run this, I'll see that it has handler.ts. This is the argument. If I add more to the thing, it's gonna add more arguments to there as well. So for this, I just wanted to use handler.ts. And what I should do is, first of all, what's cool is that because Dino tries to make it be as close to the browser, both as the most like ES module compliant, I can actually use async imports to import that file. So if I actually do, um, I can do await, uh, a new import, uh, Dino. So first let's do some sanity checking. So we can do, uh, if dino.args.length is equal. So if it's, if it's equal to, if it's not equal to one, let's say that, uh, then we're going to throw a new error, uh, need a handler, uh, need a handler. Let's run that out. So if I run it like this, got an error. I need a handler. Uh, do you know, is there a Dino quit or something? Exit, exit, you know, process with an optional exit code. Uh, do you know error? Nah, whatever. That works for me. So let's get this working again. You got a handler. All is good. So now what I can do here is do Dino.args. I'm going to take the first argument there. Uh, is, is not equal to one or whatever, error handling. The first argument is the file. So I'm gonna import that asynchronously and then get the uh, handler in here. So let's actually console log this here. A nice little trick is to do console log with a, with a um, object because then the key is the label and the value is the actual value itself. So let's run this right now and we get an error because it's not prefixed with this or there. So can I actually get a, if I were to just do uh, like that, well, that works, but that's not really the best behavior. So let's actually do this. So relative import path is not prefixed with this, this, this. Uh, I wonder if there is a uh, dino.fs uh, file. Copy file, read file, find file. So the way to do this is this function that's provided on Dino itself called real path that returns the absolute normalized path with symbolic links resolved. And it requires allow read, which we'll see about in a second. So we're gonna do dino.realpath. So dino.realpath, and I'm gonna pass it in dino.args.0. Uh, this is an await. Uh, what's kind of cool about Dino is I can also do top level await, which is a newer JavaScript feature as well. So we're going to do handler path equals this. And then we can call in here the handler path. We can also await this as well. So let's save that and run that. Here we're saying that we need to have allow read because we're reading the file system. Again, secured by default. And here we have handler right here, which is being logged up there. So I don't need that anymore. And then here is the handler in here, which is default, the default handler. So here we have the handler, which is really cool. So we're gonna call this handler right there. We're gonna remove this right there. And now we have handler. Actually, let's do this right there like that. Just like that. 
So let's restart it. And we have the handler with a default prop, because that's the default function that we're using. Such that now, if we, I guess actually things are working actually already, right? So if I go here, oh, not working. Handler is not a function, right? Because when you're importing a asynchronous ES module, you are actually dealing with the actual named, all the, it's an object and all, and it has the properties of all the exports. And in our case, we're dealing with the default export. So we're gonna do handler.default, save that, run this again. Let me say this, and it's working. That's cool. So actually, if I were to go uh, open this file and rename, uh, or not, let's rename this to banana, because that's my go-to. If I run this, I think it's just gonna, right, can't find the file, that's expected. But if I actually rename this to banana, banana, then my handler is still working. Very cool. And now we're gonna try to take this one step further. And I don't know if this is gonna work, but we shall find out where we can actually install this file globally. So it becomes a global file. So there's this, um, uh, if I go like this, there's Dino help. And these are all the commands that Dino has built in. There's one that is um, install and it installs a script as an executable. So Dino install help. This lets me install a script as an executable and essentially let me use it everywhere. So it says options, the executable name, and then the command. So I'm gonna go back to what I was using before. So we're gonna do Dino this, Dino this, install, allow read, and I think this is gonna be the name, so we're gonna call it microdino and it's installing it. So now if I were to run micro dino banana, it doesn't work. Oh, I have to add this to my path. Okay, let's do that. Add to my path like that. So if I go into my path file, actually I just call this for now. I can always do this later. Micro dino, <laughs> look at that. And it's working. That is, that is so cool. I just installed my own self-contained executable file with Dino, my own little micro Dino server, just like that. That's so cool. That's so much fun. Uh, I actually want to keep building on this script a little bit more because um, this is kind of a fun idea to kind of like hack on making my own little self-contained server and kind of just adding things to it, micro Dino. Um, probably need a better name. I'd be curious if you have any better name for that. The easy one is, uh, Seems like people take the names and they add a D in front of it. So instead of micro, it's dicro, decro, which I'm not sure is the best name for it. And also I have, I think I, the idea is I want to have this behave kind of like, uh, it'll, it'll follow the file system where we can have like a source folder. And then depending upon where files are in that file system, it'll respond to any URLs that belong to that. So if you play around with Next.js, it kind of plays like that where by convention where files are is how the server will respond to it. But stay tuned for that in the next video because that'll be a lot more fun to code when we get there. Uh, this is really fun. I enjoyed this. Um, probably gonna publish this uh, offline, not on the video, and I'll get the uh, repo ready for you to kind of look at when I'm there. But this is not over. This is just beginning. Very excited about this, uh, making a little HTTP server in Dino. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, become one so you can get the next installment of this video. If you are interested in the latest JavaScript news, subscribe to my newsletter, tinyletter.com slash hswolf, extra F for good luck. And that's it. That's our video. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you had a good week and you enjoyed this video and I will see you again next week with a brand new one. Until then, I'll talk to you later. Bye.